large to look at. It, G20 is better at, at working on global growth than any other group. But as we start looking at future problems or future goals, uh, we may have to change the composition or at least include other people uh, from time to time. You know, the G20 came about because uh, we had a problem that the G7 couldn't solve. Um, and it, we needed these countries to be able to solve the problem of uh, the crisis. Um, they were all affected by the crisis, so they all had a reason to come together and try to work on this. Um, so I think as we face different problems, we're going to have to look at who are the players we need, who are the people we need to help solve it. Um, there is a problem that any time you get a group together, the more voices you have, the more complicated it gets. So, you know, I mean, it's true when people go out to dinner together. Uh, it's true when countries get together as well. So G20 is now becoming, you know, the G20 plus a group of friends, plus a group of international organizations. I think if we, if we start looking at who's going to be at the table and around the table, we'll end up with 34, 35 players. Um, and it is flexible, but I think as the G20 starts to look at it, the G20 is better at, at working on global growth than any other group, but as we start looking at future problems or future goals, uh, we may have to change the composition or at least include other people uh, from time to time. I think that uh, the, the China has understood with the G20 presidency that there is a need for a mechanism that looks long-term, that sets itself as a device for oversight, for stewardship of the global economy um, through, through coordination, macroeconomic policies, trade policies, investment policies. They sh should all be um, coherent in such a way that they don't work against each other. One of the things that uh, G20 did uh, was that it brought developed countries and emerging markets together. And that was hailed as a big success because uh, otherwise uh, these, is, these countries were not together, they were not discussing the issues together. But the issues themselves had become global. So G7 cannot deal with the issues by themselves, the emerging countries cannot deal with the issues by themselves, or the less developed countries cannot deal with the issues with themselves. What is less appreciated and less known is that the issues have also become very cross-disciplinary. In an interconnected economy, everything depends on everything else. So trade cannot be left to World Trade Organization, and you cannot leave sustainable development to United Nations, and you cannot leave banking regulations to Bank of International Settlements. So it's all integrated, and energy markets cannot be left to International Energy Agency and regulations cannot be left to uh, IOSCO. So G20 enabled a discussion to take place on cross-disciplinary issues. It brought all of it in one fold, but it was able to discuss issues that are more cross-disciplinary, and that is the biggest benefit of G20. And it is the place to coordinate policies among the major economies, um, uh, which does not contradict uh, other fora uh, where uh, uh, policies, are, policies are coordinated and where all countries can participate like the UN system, uh, the OECD, the multilateral development banks. Um, uh, the G20 has not proven uh, very effective in several areas and there is room for improvement. Everyone is looking at China now. Um, uh, because uh, under China's uh, G20 presidency, we would hope that the effectiveness uh, uh, and the efficiency of the G20 will improve. So the lack of proper coordination is possibly the major problem uh, that we face in the world today. And this uh, is a problem not simply because interests differ across countries, but also because the institutions that we have don't permit coordinated thinking about coordination. We've had 
the climate conference COP21 in Paris. We have the SDGs uh, that were signed uh, uh, to the UN in August. Um, we have uh, initiatives that the G20 has uh, started uh, uh, in terms of social inclusion, W20, business, B20, um, and C20, different initiatives. We have many different groups concerned with many different issues. And these issues are all interlock with one another and the world needs more coherence. The G20 could become a major implementer of these many different initiatives. They could become an implementer of the Sustainable Development Goals. They could implement the Climate Agreement. Uh, they could play an important role in green infrastructure investment. And if they go down this road, so the G20, of being implementers that in a coherent fashion of different initiatives that have started in different organizations, then I think we will come into a much healthier world in which it is possible to think coherently about the many different problems that the world has and bring countries into relationship with one another in addressing them.